The following program is a public access production. Comcast is required to provide time on this channel and make it available pursuant to franchise agreements with the communities we serve. Comcast is not affiliated with the following program or the producers of public access programming and is not responsible for the content. The following program does not reflect the opinions of Comcast or its affiliates. Welcome to the Diane Boone Show. I am so glad to be in the land of the living because I know somebody laid down last night and didn't get up this morning. So I just thank God for every day that he allowed me to be here on top of the dirt. Ain't nothing like it. So I tell all of my viewers out there, be happy, live life to the fullest, enjoy yourself, and please don't forget to tell God and the Lord Jesus Christ that you thank him every day. I have a very special guest today on my show, a very nice young man, very successful, and I can't wait to see what he has to say. His name is Wendell Mosby. Thank you, sir, thank you. for coming on the Diane Boone Show. Glad to have you. Well, thank you for having me. All right. <laughs> and you are a motivated speaker. Mm -hmm. You are an entrepreneur. And you also are, um, you organize and you uh, sit on the trustee mm -hmm. board uh, at, at the at Prairie State Community, at Prairie State Community College. Mm -hmm. All right, that's a, oh, that's a lot of hats. <laughs> wow, that's the, that's the ones I disclosed. Okay, wow, <laughs> I bet you have a lot of hats. So tell me a, a little about yourself and 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 what's really really uh, inspired you to do the things that you're doing. Okay, well, I mean, I'm born and raised <coughs> in Chicago Heights. Uh, was this only child. Uh, me and my mom uh, passed away at age 41. Oh, wow. Uh, a semester young. before I graduated from college. Oh, wow. Uh, I have a 15 year old named Tyrone. He'll, okay. he'll be a sophomore. Oh, wow. Yeah, so uh, he's a lot of my time is uh, being committed to making sure that uh, raise him right, teach oh. him the way he should go. Okay. Oh, that's a lot of responsibility. Yeah. Just, and thank God you are able to take it on. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, wow. Yeah, he, he's always been uh, a little uncomfortable with me in his life because most of the kids around him, their dads aren't there. Right. And then, you know, even in school, the teachers, he said, why do teachers got to call you? I said, well, because they know your parent cares and will do something. Exactly. And, and so uh, he's adjusted well. Okay. <laughs> That's wonderful. Seeing a parent, being a single parent is not easy. Yeah, yeah. And raising a child, most definitely not easy. I don't care if it's one or ten, it's not easy. <laughs> I raised five myself, and uh, at one point in my life, I was a single parent. Uh, I got a divorce from my first husband, and I was, anytime you married and you get a divorce, you're still a single parent, you know, uh, because most time your ex-spouse don't participate uh, the way they should, and they're not there for those children every day. So the mom is always there, so that means she's a single parent, or the daddy is always there. That means he's a single parent. Oh, yeah. And that's the job. Oh, I'm yeah, and he's, he's, moving, he's moving in with me uh, this summer, so he'll finish out high school with me. Mm. And so we, we tried to experiment before. Uh, I tell people I'm, I'm more prepared now than you was back then. <laughs> when I was uh, several years ago when he moved in for a couple years. Okay. I was being a bachelor. Have, I ate when I wanted to eat. You know, yeah. talking about Fiji. What do you mean? Right. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, but it's been exciting uh, okay. being able to come back home. Uh, went to Central High School in Olympia Fields and uh, went on away to Iowa State University and studied apparel production management. Okay. And uh, and I got a bachelor's. And so I wanted to do, to do design, but I wanted to be a producer. Okay. I see manufacturing is where the money's at. Exactly. Design is all the fame and glam, but right. the manufacturing aspect and so Exactly. That's wonderful. Yeah. So Okay. So what are you doing now? What am I doing now? Uh, like like you mentioned earlier, I was elected to the Board of Trustees at Prairie State Community College last okay. April uh, two thousand eleven. And so just finishing up my first year. Okay. And uh beyond my wildest dreams, the opportunities that it has uh, allowed me to have. I had never been to Washington, D.C., and okay. I've been to Washington, D.C. twice. Okay. 
and uh, being on Capitol Hill was kind of fun. <laughs> it was kind of fun, you know, talking to our congressional leaders and meeting uh, several different trustees throughout the country. Uh, and it's an honor to represent the District 515 Prairie State College and to be able to tell students, young people, that, hey, I came from these same streets. You exactly. can succeed. Exactly. And so uh, a lot of what I do is, is about just trying to be an example as to, hey, yeah, adversity hits your life, but you can yeah. still succeed. So and uh, even though my mom is gone, I tell people all my favorite ladies are gone. Okay. So my mother you passed away, grandmother. both my grandmothers, wow. and then my oldest aunt, and then even my stepmom passed away when I was in high school. Oh. So, so all the ladies. All your ladies All the gone. ladies. <laughs> but you know what? They still looking down oh, on Oh, absolutely. You. They, they this beautiful angel sitting up there. Hey, they, absolutely. They just making sure they protect you. Yeah, and I tell, I have this argument around Father's Day with uh, some of my lady friends, and they talk about the ones that are single, single mothers, and say, well, I was a father and a mother. I'm like, okay. no, my, you can never be the father. You can never be a father. I say, my mom, she couldn't teach me how to be a man, exactly. but she, could, she taught me how to treat a lady. That's right. <laughs> that's, that's, that, that, and you know what? That is true. Uh, a lot of single moms think they can really, truly take the place of the male. But you can't, especially when you're raising a male child. It, it, it just don't work. Yeah. Uh, in some aspect, you do real good. You know, mm -hmm. mothers, you have to give it to them. They oh, do, absolutely. Do real good. Absolutely. But it's just some things you just can't teach a boy uh, that a man, how, the way a man can. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, and I, and I experienced that uh, with my uh, oldest son. Uh, he got in a little trouble. And uh, he had to spend some time in penitentiary. But... I did the best I could with him. Um, I just couldn't keep him out of the, the, the games and, and oh, yeah. different things, you know. Yeah, one, he had to learn. One of the things when I talk to, to mothers, I tell them, I say they, everybody's always talking about deficits, about, oh, there's no man in the house, there's nothing. I say, well, let's do strength-based. What can you teach them then? Exactly. And I say, my mom never, it wasn't about what we didn't have, it's what we did have. Exactly. And I tell them, I say, you can teach them a lot of different things. You can expose them. The other things can come, and so one of the things that I'm about to I'm about to launch is a apprentice program. Okay. I'm big on watching Apprentice and the Shark Tank, and one of the things I was gonna do a mentoring program. I'm like, well, you know, it's more passive. I wanted something that was engaging and interactive, and so uh, you know the saying from the Bible: you teach a man to fish. Exactly. And so one of the things I'm gonna start an apprentice program and teach these young men everything okay. I know. Okay. Whether it's about being an entrepreneur, whether it's about how do you be a, a gentleman, chivalry, uh, what does it mean to be successful in life in the classroom, what does it mean to have self-control, uh, and teach them everything I know. Okay. And, and continue to, and so that's one of the things I'm excited. So what are the uh, ages that you plan the, on? The uh, ages will be from, 19, from 12 to 19. Okay, from 12 to 19. Yeah, I've already had some mothers who was like, hey, are you having any adults? And I said, no, I'm, right. I'm big on youth. Uh, one of the things when I campaigned, uh, my grandmother had, was deceased when I started campaigning last year. But as I campaigned throughout the communities, people started to tell me stories about my grandmother. Okay. And how she was this activist. So they knew, they knew your, your grandma. Yeah, well, my okay. grandma, how she was an activist and told me all these stories. And I'm like, wow, I can see the similarities in some of the things I do. And, and my mother, she did a lot of work on the east side of Chicago Heights, and she would take me to work with her. And on the east side of Chicago Heights, it was a little more impoverished than the, mm -hmm. the west side of Chicago right. Heights. And, and so I always was uncomfortable, but I got to see the kind of work she did okay. and, and the, the joy that she brought to those mm -hmm. children. And I had the opportunity, my first job was working with her at a park. King okay. Park in, in east, on the east side. East side of Chicago Heights. Yeah, and okay. we got to share a lot of times. And she, she tells everybody, she would tell everybody she taught me how to shoot. Okay. Because we would play horse a lot. Okay. And so, uh, and that's where my passion for, for community uh, was cultivated, watching my, the work my mother Your did, mother my grandmother did. With, with the community. And, and so when people ask me why did I get involved in politics, it was simple. My grandmother, always, they always taught me never to be a spectator, mm -hmm. be a player, exactly. be an active participant. Exactly. And so I, it was time for me to get in the game. Mm -hmm. I said, uh, our, my generation, I'm 34, it's my generation, it's time for us to stand up and be accounted for. Exactly. 
And so uh, I got in the game and uh, been able to experience quite a few things. And it's been very exciting. And so that's so a lot of what I do is uh, doing workshops, talking about uh, my nickname. My nickname is Wimp. Hey. And I've had it since and this, I was. And, and this is going to be the name of the episode, <laughs> Wimp. Yeah, being a wimp isn't easy. And being a wimp isn't easy. Hey, that's yeah. amazing. And so at the age of four, I got the nickname because I was real f small and frail. Right. And got picked on a lot. And, I mean, I was everything, a, a epitome of a wimp. Okay. And it wasn't until I hit puberty when I started to grow and started to get an interest in sports. And so it started to really, my athletic side came out. But the nickname stuck. And so when I got to high school, that was when the Fresh Prince of Ballet was real popular. <laughs> right. had, a, had a hot top fade, exactly, ears was out exactly, here. Exactly. Uh, I was a goofy, goofy kid. Okay. And, and a friend of me friend asked me, he said, hey, you should start your own clothing line called Wimpwear. Wimpwear. And so I started uh, the summer. I saved all my money up and put clothes on Lailway at Kmart. And when I got my clothes off Lailway, and then I went and got Wimpwear, embroidered on all my clothes. And then, and that was just me. It was my personal style. style right. But by the time I became a senior in high school, it was a demand for him. Okay. And by that point, I had took economics. Okay. And so I started learning oh. about supply and demand. <laughs> <laughs> and so. But this is going to show you that no matter what you do in life, it's a process. Yes. In everything you do. Yep. And so, and, and then I went to college. My home ec teacher was the only person who talked to me about going to college. Wow. Mrs. Ross. And I was like, oh, I don't know. I might stay, you know, in, in the area, go downtown. <coughs> and she <coughs> recommended I apply to Iowa State. And I okay. said, well, my grades aren't good enough. Took the ACT three times, got 315s. I'm thinking I'm dumbing in a box of rocks. And with her encouragement, <coughs> excuse me, you know, with her encouragement, I applied and I was okay. accepted. And I didn't, I got, I got a little financial aid, not a lot. But I just knew my life was going to be different. And my mom was super excited, and uh, I went away to school. And, and my mom told me to enjoy myself, and she was able, before she passed away, she was able to take a lot of trips to Iowa and oh, get the experience. Blessing. She actually went to class with me once <coughs> for a whole day. Oh, that was a blessing. And, and I, I would tell her, I said, you know, a black parent, single mom, coming to college in the middle of Iowa right. with her child. Exactly. I say that's going to speak volumes. That's right. And she was proud of you. And I was I was super excited. My friends were excited to meet her and it was a great time we shared. Right. And, and so that's a, that's a memory that you can hold on the rest of your oh, life. Oh yeah. And so uh so and I, that's the story I tell. I talk about the adversity. You know, my mom, she she died of complications of HIV AIDS. Okay. She was okay. uh a uh, young a man she was dating he was on the down low and all those type of wow. things and and but she didn't love her let it let it really she, you know she said the doctor had told her once to that she could just uh apply for social security and didn't don't work mm -hmm. and she was like Is these fools crazy okay they gonna just sit around and die Exactly. And, and until she could not move anymore, she was always working. Okay. Uh, up the year she passed away in 2000, she came and saw me almost every month. Okay. She would take that drive. She was trying to spend much time with you. And she, she didn't really live. tell me how, how, how sick, sick she, she was. was. Right. And it was until my grandmother called me and said, I think you need to come home. Okay. And it was around Thanksgiving time in 2000. Okay. And so... Uh, that was the, the last times that we sh shared, shared together. together. Uh, but I know everything I do is because of all the praying she did and all the other prayer warriors out there. Exactly. And uh, one of the funny stories is that she gave me a Bible when I went away to college. Okay. And I really never read the Bible per se. I had, I had gave my life to Christ when I was in the summer of my fresh my freshman year of college, and she came down and my uncle, uh, Pastor Raymond Mosby, okay. he he did the sermon. Uh, and she gave me this Bible, but it wasn't until I got out of school, maybe about 10 years ago, when I started to really uh, read, the Bible read the Bible and, and be in, and attend church faithfully. And I started to go through this Bible, and she had bookmarks. Okay. She had wrote she scriptures had certain things in the Bible. That she wanted to and I'm read. like, she's still talking to me. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And that's amazing, because <laughs> uh, she knew... She knew what her end was going to end. 
Uh, but she wanted to make sure that you got good understanding of everything about the Word of God. Oh, yeah. So that's why she left the marks. Oh, yeah. And so, so you can study them and, and, and be able to pass them on to your son. Yep. And I, I carry her Bible now. Uh, and uh, it's just been a blessing. The opportunities that I've had, you know, like I, I was talking to you earlier that I had had opportunity to meet President Barack Obama. Yeah. And uh, that was, I had, you could have never told me that I would meet the president under the circumstances. Wow. And it was, uh. it was an exciting time. And uh, I sent my son. A, Beautiful picture. Yeah, Beautiful thanks. Picture. And so, uh, oh. but that's for my son. This isn't for me. It's for, exactly. for him to know that. The, right. the future, the, what, the world is whatever he wants it to be. This is beautiful. And so, um, I'm hoping that uh, we can get the viewers to, to, to um, view this. This is beautiful. You got it? Yeah, so it was pretty exciting. So, beautiful, beautiful. Um, so I'm hoping the next time I go to D.C., I'm... Uh, I get one of those personal guided tours. Right, <laughs> right. Okay, how uh, did you really, really uh, uh, take to our president? I'm talking about what influence that that he uh, that that he put on you um, to give you a little bit momentum well, to, to do this grassroots stuff because you know that's how he started. Exactly. Well, uh, it's just like you, a young man. And, yeah, and, and, I think. I think it's uh, that that American dream that everybody always talks about, that elusive American dream, okay. and why so many foreigners 